everyone, welcome back to another online lesson. This is Sumitra Chetri and I am a second semester BA trainee of Siliguri Tarai BA College and Siliguri Primary Teacher Training College. Today we are going to learn about important topic, the Union Judiciary, that is the Supreme Court of India. And I chose this topic from the prescribed textbook of ICSA Class 10 Civics. As you can see, I have prepared a chart for your better understanding of lesson and also to provide some freshness and variety in teaching. But before that, let us have a quick revision on the organs of government and in which organs lies the Indian judiciary, its hierarchical structure and the place of Supreme Court in that hierarchy. According to the constitution, government of India is constituted of three organs, namely the legislature, other one is the executive and the judiciary. Very simply, the first and foremost organ that is the legislature consists of the parliament that is the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha and the state legislature and its main function is to make the laws. The second organ that is the executive consists of the council of ministers and the officials of ministries both at the union and state level and its main function is to enforce the laws. And the third and independent organ is judiciary which is our main focusing area today and it consists of the supreme court, the high court and the district court and its main function is to interpret the laws. So these are the three main branches and organs of the government but our main lesson will be on the Indian judiciary or the union judiciary that is supreme court. Beginning with the hierarchical structure of court in the topmost hierarchy lies the supreme court of India standing at the apex as the highest court of appeal of Indian juridical system. Below the supreme court lies the high court that is the second court of importance. These courts are mainly confined to the jurisdiction of state, groups of state or union territories and in the third stage of hierarchy lies the district court which is further subdivided into numerous courts like the session courts, the lower courts and the panchayat. Remember each lower court is subordinate to its higher one with the supreme court at the top that is the district court to the higher that is high court and the high court is responsible to the supreme court. Now, after its hierarchical structures, let's get straight into the numerous areas of Supreme Court. The first is its compositions, as I've written here. Number one is the composition of the Supreme Court. Number two, we are going to know about the appointments of the judges of the Supreme Court along with the Chief Justice. Number three is the qualifications of the Supreme Court judges, number four, the tenure of office, and number five, which is most important, that is the independence of judiciary from the control of the executive. The Supreme Court came into existence on 20th January 1950. The jurisdiction and composition of Supreme Court is stated in details under Part 5, Chapter 4 from Article 124 to Article 147 of the Indian Constitution. Remember, uh, the, only the Union Judiciary, that is the Supreme Court, uh, comes under these articles of Indian Constitution. Moving to its composition, in the beginning, the Supreme Court had a Chief Justice and seven other judges, that is, the total number of judges. Uh, strength was 8 but now they are at present the strength of the Supreme Court judges is 34 that is one Chief Justice and 33 other judges. Remember the Parliament may increase or decrease the number of judges of Supreme Court as and when required. As we can see from the beginning the Parliament has passed the laws and have raised the strength of the judges till date. Now let's move on to the next topic that is the appointment of judges of the Supreme Court. Here remember 
it is very good questions that uh, how is the judge of supreme court appointed and most important is who appoints the judges and the answer for this is the indian president it's neither the council of ministers nor the prime minister but the president appoints the judges and the chief justice of the supreme court now uh, during the appointment of the chief justice the president takes the consultations with such judges of the supreme court and high court and while appointing the judges of the supreme court the president is bound to consult the chief justice of the supreme court now let's move on to the third point that is the qualifications of the judges a person to be appointed as a judges of the supreme court must have the following qualifications let's see number one he or she must be a citizen of India. This is the must-have qualifications. The foreigners or the person belonging to the Anglo-Indian community cannot be uh, qualified as the judges of the Supreme Court. The second point is he or she should have worked as a judge of the High Court for at least five years. The third is he or she should have been an advocate of High Court for a period of ten years. Now here the qualifications is either the person has to be work as a judge of the high court for five years or that person has to be an advocate of high court for a period of 10 years and also the person uh, should be in the opinion of the president a distinguished jurist now let's see the fourth part that is the tenure of the office of the judges of the supreme court the chief justice and the judge of the supreme court holds office till the completion of 65 years of age remember after the completion of 65 years the judges get retired and the new chief justice of supreme court is appointed and and the uh, current incumbent of the supreme court is sarat arvind Bobde. he is the current or you can say the present chief justice of india who has taken the office since the november 2019 uh, like its uh, appointment procedure there is a removal procedures too of the judges and the judges can resign from the post whenever they like or they can be removed through the impeachment process now what is this impeachment process is if the judges are found or proven misbehavior or of acting against the provision of the constitution then the either house of the parliament can pass a majority of two-third votes present and voting and in this way the judges of the supreme court can be removed from their post now let's move on to the fifth point that is the independence of the judiciary from the control of the executive now here you see the framers of the indian constitutions were eager to make the supreme court free from control of the legislature and the executive to enable the supreme court to be neutral and impartial in the dispensation of justice even if its judgment were to go against the government now here you see uh, the judges cannot make a uh, impartial judgment they cannot uh, be the servant of the leaders political party leaders or mlas or mps but their judgment should be impartial and uh, as we know the supreme court is the highest court of appeal so uh, the framers of the constitutions have skipped in view that the judges should not have any uh, burden uh, from the political parties or the ministers of the parliament. Now, let me bring into light some constitutional provision that has been made to ensure the independence of the court. That is, uh, the appointment of Supreme Court judges is not left in the hands of the executive. That is, no council of ministers is able to appoint the judges. And also, the appointment of MLAs and MPs of parliament and legislative uh, of state does not prescribe any minimum qualifications but in the legal field the constitution makes sure that only qualified and competent persons can be appointed as judges and also there is no any sole control of executive over the removal of the judges as we know it is quite a rigid process which aims at safeguarding the security and the service of the judges of the supreme court 
This is a big information on Supreme Court, but I must say that there are lots of more areas to cover in this topic, like the role of Supreme Court, its powers and functions, which we will be dealing in our next class. That's all for today. Thank you so much.